At the start of the first movie, a young man is meticulously sketching an apple. There is no one else in the room, and there is complete silence. As the man finishes up, we see a poorly made sketch, implying that he is not an expert. Just then, something moves inside the closed cupboard, startling the man. He nervously approaches it, thinking that it is a mouse. But to his shock, an apple has appeared out of nowhere. The man is completely baffled for a while, but then he puts two and two together and realizes that his sketch has actually come alive. To test his theory, he grabs his notebook and starts sketching a 100 yen bill. Once he is done, he excitedly runs to the cupboard. When he opens it, he finds the 100 yen bill there. The man inspects it for a few seconds and concludes that it is very real. He then excitedly rushes back to his couch and sketches a stack of money. As soon as he finishes, a big wad of cash miraculously appears inside the cupboard. Now, the man is rich and powerful, and he is an apple. So all he requires is a beautiful girlfriend. So, just like any simp would, he starts sketching a voluptuous woman. However, in the midst of it, someone arrives at the door and the man goes to check. He leaves his notebook on the table with the sketch incomplete. The woman's head and entire lower half is missing. After a while, when the man returns to the room, he hears a sudden knock on the cupboard. This is when he realizes that his incomplete sketch has come to life. The movie ends as a terrifying hand slowly emerges from the cupboard. Nice, there's probably boobs in there. The protagonist of the second movie is an obese and extremely lustful man named Bing. He works as the manager of a private investigation company, but every time he sees a female client, he loses focus and starts fantasizing about her. Bing has only one aim in life, to have as much coitus as he can. Normally, he leaves for home at sharp five, but when beautiful women come in seeking help, he could stay until even midnight. The amount of dedication this man has for his dirty hobby is unparalleled. One day, a young woman named Susan visits him in his office and frantically explains that her husband has gone missing since a week ago. However, Bing is so focused on staring at her body parts that he doesn't even pay attention to her words. He is actually fantasizing about doing it with her right now. When Susan pleads for help, Bing snaps out of his dream and promises to start the investigation ASAP. But in reality, he doesn't care about her husband, he only wants her. Later that night, we get to know a bit more about Bing. He has never been married because he doesn't believe in relationships. Whenever he feels aroused, he calls his equally lusty secretary, Gina, and does it with her. However, he has done her so many times that he has gotten bored. His name used to be Bang, but now, well, you get the picture. The next morning at the office, Bing is doing what he usually does, watching adult movies. Right then, Susan barges in with some evidence which could possibly help her find her missing husband. Bing takes it from her and assures her that they will find the man. Then, Sensing an opportunity, he invites her to a local restaurant for lunch, saying that they can discuss the case further there. As expected, a naive Susan accepts without thinking much about it. Shortly after, Bing heads to a site with his juniors to investigate the missing man. However, he quickly gets bored and decides to take a leak. As soon as Bing unzips his penis, though, or pants, I thought that said penis, he is left in utter disbelief. It's almost as if he has seen a ghost. Without wasting his time, Bing gets into his car and drives off. He receives a call from Susan along the way, but surprisingly, he rejects it. After a while, he visits his regular doctor and explains the situation. Bing pulls his pants down and shockingly reveals that his manhood has shrunk by a considerable margin. Sure it has, Bing. Everything was fine up until this morning, but now things are different. Unfortunately, to Bing's dismay, the doctor is equally shocked and clueless. In all his years of medical experience, he has never witnessed anything quite like this. He only says, have some Viagra, hope it comes back tomorrow morning. So, that night, Bing consumes the pills and goes to bed. He even places a camera nearby to check if something supernatural is trying to take away his manhood. Unfortunately, when he wakes up the next morning, he realizes that the situation has gotten worse. The manhood has shrunk into an even smaller size. Soon, he'll have even smaller PP energy than Bezos. Terrified by this, Bing desperately tries to seek help. Hence, he goes on a rampage across the city, revealing his tiny pee, pee to everyone he meets. Bing shows it to a guy at the pharmacy, his juniors at the office, and even random people at the supermarket. When nothing works, he travels to the Himalayas and pleads for help at a monastery. One particular monk steps forward and says, we can beat the evil out of it. Oh, man. This excites Bing, and he urges the monks to initiate the procedure. Come on, boys, beat me off! 
but all they do is beat him up with sticks until he falls unconscious. In the next scene, Bing visits his doctor once again and begs for a solution. By this time, his manhood is barely visible. Doc, next to me, all other men look like Google. Unfortunately, the doctor says that there is no cure for this terrible disease. All Bing can do is pray to God that it doesn't go away completely. However, our protagonist is not going to give up on his most precious assets so easily. That night, before going to sleep, he plans to tie a rope around his manhood. Good luck. Unfortunately, at the same time, his secretary Gina barges into the room, looking for some action. When she sees him in this state, she is taken aback. Gina can't believe that the manhood she loves and cherishes so much has now become the size of a pea. Suddenly, it starts shrinking again, and the two are sent into a state of panic. Gina desperately tries to hold it with the rope, but it's too late. Bing's manhood has disappeared into thin air, and now he has nothing to live for. The movie ends as a depressed Gina leaves Bing's room, probably because she is not interested in him anymore. On a Halloween night, a young woman is traveling alone in her car. She appears to be lost and scared, as there is nothing but wilderness and silence all around. So, she takes a U-turn and goes to the nearest gas station to ask for directions. To her bad luck, there is no one around. Anxious, the woman gets out of her car and knocks at the door. Right then, the attendant angrily arrives, chastising a strange-looking clown. The latter has apparently smeared his excrement all over the bathroom. As the woman looks in shock and confusion, the attendant threatens to call the cops if the clown doesn't leave. He also warns that he has a gun, which he will not hesitate to use. The statement appears to anger the clown a bit. However, he chooses to leave without causing any commotion. Following this, the attendant helps the woman with gas and other necessary supplies. As he is explaining the directions to her, suddenly, a loud bang is heard from the store. The attendant slowly goes inside to inspect but sadly, he never returns. After 10 minutes, the woman becomes worried and heads inside the store as well. When she reaches a certain room, she is horrified by what she sees. The clown from earlier has brutally killed the attendant, and now he is dissecting him bit by bit. In the next scene, we see the woman nervously driving away in her car. She tries alerting the authorities about the murder, but due to bad reception, the call doesn't go through. Just then, she notices the clown waiting for her on the side of the road. It appears as if he has teleported to the location. Fortunately, before he can get to her, the woman drives away. After a while, she spots a car on the road and approaches it for help. But to her horror, the driver has been assaulted brutally, probably by the same clown. This prompts the woman to quickly get back in her car and drive away. Unfortunately, as she is trying to call her boyfriend, we see that the clown has somehow snuck into the back seat of her car. He suddenly puts plastic over her face, trying to suffocate her. But the woman manages to escape by hitting the brake abruptly. She then runs into the forest on foot until she comes across an abandoned warehouse. Although it is dark and scary, the woman decides to take her chances. She gets inside and bars the door with a metal rod. Soon, the clown arrives and starts banging on the door from the other side. But when he fails to open it, he goes away. Several hours pass by, but the woman still doesn't have the courage to go out. As she tries to sleep, suddenly, the clown appears through the ground and catches her. He then beats her several times times with a whip. He calls it his happy whip, causing her extreme pain. However, the woman manages to retaliate by stabbing the clown with his own knife. She then stabs him a few more times before running away from there. Soon, the woman reaches the road, where she luckily finds a passerby. Seeing her condition, he immediately lets her in and inquires what happened. The woman is unable to explain anything at the moment, and she simply says, let's go, please, he is coming. Unfortunately, just after a few seconds, the resilient clown approaches them in his own car and shoots the passerby dead. As a result, the latter's car loses control and crashes into a tree. When the woman regains consciousness, she finds herself in the clown's operating room. To her horror, he has amputated her hands and legs. He has also written several derogatory words on her body. The movie ends as the clown lets out a maniacal laugh, while the woman screams in horror. Geez, that clown is a real bag of shit. The final movie is set in a dystopian world where monsters and spirits still exist. One night, when a ship is sailing through a deadly storm, it suddenly comes under attack by a giant crab-like creature named Thanopod. Using its deadly claws, it quickly kills some of the sailors, forcing the rest of them to retreat in the cellar. Later, the survivors conduct a vote to determine who will confront the Thanopod. In the end, a shy but cunning man named Torin is chosen. He initially tries to run away from there, but his friends pick him up and 
throw him near the bunker where the Thanopod is currently residing. Having no options left, Torin slowly makes his way downstairs and confronts the beast. To his shock, the Thanopod can now speak, using one of the sailors it had killed earlier. It repeatedly says, Me need meat. Faden Island, take me. Torin is terrified by the gruesome sight, but he also gets an idea. He makes a deal with the Thanopod. He will take it to the island, and in return, it will have to spare him. Surprisingly, the beast agrees and backs away, leaving a trail of blood and intestines in its wake. Torin quickly goes through the waste until he finds a special key. In the next scene, he heads upstairs and tells his friends that he made a deal. But before they can ask him any more, he rushes to the captain's room and opens a safe using the key he found earlier. Torin then pulls out a gun and points it at them, demanding them to back off. Once everyone calms down, he says that he is in charge from now on. One of the sailors tries to revolt, but Torin teaches him a lesson by throwing him into the bunker, where he is immediately gobbled up by the beast. After this, Torin gathers everyone in his room and reveals that the Thanopod wants to go to Faden Island, as there it can kill a lot of humans and live freely. However, Torin has a better idea. Since the beast is not good at geography, he wants to lead it to another island where no humans reside. The plan is a risky one, but if it works, thousands of lives will be saved. However, Torn doesn't want to take the decision alone, so instead he wants everyone to vote. So, he hands each of them a piece of paper and asks them to choose between the two options. After a while, the results come out, and Torin angrily says that two people voted to take the Thanopod to Faden Island. Then, he pulls out his gun and kills them in front of everyone. After this, he dumps the corpses into the basement, which the Thanopod devours immediately. The next morning, as everyone is busy with their work, Torin goes to the basement where he shockingly finds that the Thanopod has laid its eggs. Now, several thousand tiny creatures are running around the boat. To make matters worse, all of them are hungry, and they demand food right now. On the other hand, the remaining sailors have become tired of Torin's leadership, so they plan to eliminate him. They slowly sneak up to his room and attack him while he is sleeping, but it turns out that he is not in his bed. Torin suddenly arrives behind his fellow sailors and kills them one by one. After the massacre, he drops all the dead bodies into the basement, where they are consumed in seconds. Now, only Torin and another sailor remain. However, as they talk, he suddenly shoves the sailor into the basement, revealing that when he conducted the vote earlier, everyone had voted to take the Thanopod to Faden Island. None of them wanted to save the lives of innocent people. At last, Torin confronts the Thanopod himself and destroys the barrels, spilling oil all over the place. Then he shoots at the lantern, which immediately catches fire and sets the place ablaze. Following this, he somehow makes it out of the basement and jumps into the sea, where he has already stationed an escape boat. The Thanopod, on the other hand, desperately tries to escape the basement. It breaks the ceiling and almost manages to get out. But just then, an explosion occurs, killing the beast along with all of its children. The movie ends as the badass Torin slowly rows away from the explosion. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.